If you're responsible for managing or securing a Microsoft 365 tenant, I'm sure you've been asked, or perhaps you probably asked yourself at some point, do we have our data backed up? If something happens to the data, the files, perhaps even the emails in our tenant, do we have a way to restore those in some kind of incident or disaster? But I wonder if you've ever asked yourself or if someone else has ever asked you, are your Microsoft 365 configurations backed up? People tend to ask that quite a lot less, which raises another question. Why does it matter? Why should you today watching this video worry about backing up your Microsoft 365 configurations? Recently, we at CoreView ran a survey with, I think it was 250 IT leaders from every industry in large organizations. And we asked them about backup. 96% of the respondents said they either had their data backed up or a smaller percentage of them said, we're planning to do it. Only 4% of the people surveyed weren't doing anything about data backup. And I think that's a fair representation of the industry today. People take data backup seriously, and that's a really good sign. But we asked them a second question. Do you have your Microsoft 365 configurations backed up? And in response to that, we got some very interesting data. Just 18% of the people surveyed had their configurations backed up. And let me break that down a little bit more for you to give you a bit more clarity about what's going on. So when we asked people, do you back up your Microsoft 365 configurations? 13% told us they do nothing. Then 18% told us they were using an internal process, I assume manually going through and checking what their configurations should be, keeping it in a spreadsheet, potentially using some PowerShell, you know, just doing things in house. Next up was 23% of people who told us that their data backup vendors are actually backing up their configurations. This is really interesting. Although data backup vendors do sometimes back up some very small objects or groups or things of this kind, there are no data backup vendors who truly back up all of your most critical Microsoft 365 configurations. They may do some small bits and pieces, but there is no one who's doing this in a holistic way. But the most shocking bit of data that we found was actually that 49% of people said that Microsoft was backing up their configurations for them. This was especially shocking to us because Microsoft actually doesn't do this. What does this mean? It means there are many people out there in the IT industry who believe that either their data backup vendors are keeping them resilient or that Microsoft is gonna keep them resilient in the face of some kind of incident. Now you might be saying that data is very interesting, but why should I care about it? And that's actually a very good question. So there is a chance that backing up your Microsoft 365 configurations is really not that important for you. There are a few questions you can ask to try and figure this out. For example, when you say you're using Microsoft 365, well, that's a pretty broad statement, right? Like, what do you mean by that? Are you using Entra? You very likely are. Teams, SharePoint, Exchange, etc. Are you using Defender, Intune, Purview, all of these different elements in the Microsoft 365 platform? Because the more of that stuff you're using, the more different application services workloads you're using, the more configurations you're going to have. The second thing to ask is how many unique configurations do you have across all of those different services? What do I mean by unique configurations? Well, Microsoft 365 has about 10,000 different configuration elements. That means you have different settings and policies. And when you set up one of those settings, you can have a bunch of sub elements as well that you configure to set up that policy. Like for example, a conditional access policy, you could argue that's one configuration, but in reality, it's got a lot of sub settings that can have you know, lots of different variables. And that's actually a really good example of a configuration or a set of configurations that can have many variables. I might have a conditional access policy for myself, which has a bunch of different variables based on who I am and my role at the organization. But for a guest user who is trying to access our tenant, it might be an entirely different conditional access policy. So that's one set of configurations that you could have multiple variations of. The same with security groups, for example, right? That's one type of configuration you could have multiple variables of. Depending on your organization, you may have a whole stack of some of these types of configurations. So you're not simply gonna have those, those 10,000 elements to consider. You may have 100,000, or in some cases, organizations that we've worked with have had over a million in the extreme end of the spectrum. So not only should you look at how many services are using in your tenant, but how many different configurations and variables do you have? And finally, how many tenants do you have, right? Because one of the nightmarish things about working in a highly complex multi-tenant Microsoft environment is those configurations are kind of isolated in each tenant and they need to be configured individually. 
So if I've got two or three tenants that are using the same kinds of services, it's more or less going to be a multiplication of two or three times as many configurations for me to manage. So all of that is to say, based on where you are on that spectrum, configuration backup becomes more or less important. If you were to have some kind of incident, whether it was an internal member of staff or a cyber attacker or you know something we couldn't even possibly imagine, where many of your critical configurations and settings were deleted, changed, just plowed through by somebody with bad intentions or maybe just foolish intentions. What are you able to do to get yourself back into the posture that you need to be in? Because the other thing to bear in mind in terms of configuration backup for 365, some of these configurations are, you know, without meaning to use marketing terminology, this is just true, they're mission critical. We talked about conditional access policies, in tune device compliance policies, cross tenant access policies. Depending on how much of Defender you're using, if you have that set up, those configurations are pretty crucial for your cybersecurity strategy. So if somebody changes these maliciously, accidentally, are you able to restore yourself back to the right posture quickly? And this, you know, the, whether or not that matters to you really depends on how big your environment is, how many of these services you're using. So that's one of the most important things to bear in mind when you're asking yourself, how far up the stack of my many almost infinite priorities I have should configuration backup and restore for 365B for me? The reality is that configuration backup is very important. Microsoft 365 these days, it's not just another application or service like monday.com or Calendly or some of these other SaaS applications. It's more like a complex enterprise SaaS platform with pretty much everything your organization uses on a day-to-day -day basis just to run. Your email, your communications, your security, your identity, it's all running from 365. So if someone was to change those configurations or a significant amount of them were to be removed or deleted, the implications could be, I would say, mission critical in terms of your organization. And when you think about that, it kind of raises the question, why haven't we as an industry been thinking about this and why isn't it being talked about more? And I think there's actually a, a very common sense answer to that. If you think about all the different bits of software and the different platforms that you use in your environment, take for example, an email security platform. Now, if somebody goes in and changes the configurations in your email security platform, that is gonna be very dangerous, right? It's gonna cause some serious issues. But if you want to go back in there and start to reconfigure it, it is going to take time, but it is not going to take days, weeks, or potentially a month for you to get that back into a situation where it's secure and operational. That's not the same in a Microsoft 365 environment where you've got all these different workloads and services and potentially hundreds of thousands of configurations, many of which need to be precisely configured for you to operate securely as a business, right? And the other part of this as well, especially for medium to large organizations, the number of administrators who are given privileges inside of 365 versus the number of security administrators who might have access to your email security platform, it's just a different order of magnitude. So there's a sensitivity thing in terms of the amount of access inside of your tenant, but it's also critical and sensitive in terms of the services that it provides and the scale of the configuration issue. Email security platforms don't cry out for configuration backup and restore, but there are some SaaS platforms, like I said, complex enterprise SaaS platforms like Microsoft 365, and really Microsoft 365 is the most extreme version of anything we could truly categorize as SaaS. It's kind of breaking the definitions of what that is. It's so big, it's so monstrous, that it kind of de demands its own categories to be created. And I think one of them is this configuration backup and restore which many people are now asking for and which auditors are increasingly saying you need to have a way to restore this mission critical environment in the case of some kind of disaster and it's not just auditors either in fact gartner recently mentioned this in their guide to backing up microsoft 365 they had all the classic guidance right on data backup file backup email archiving and all this stuff and then towards the end they talked about configuration backup which is a really big signifier actually that we are moving into a situation where this is becoming its own legitimate category. Now, if you're watching this video and you don't have any kind of backup process for your configurations, don't worry, you're not alone. This is very important, but there are some basic things you can do. As an organization, it's very important to keep a list of what you would deem to be your most sensitive, critical configurations. What are the configurations that you need to ensure stay in place? And if they are changed, that you know exactly what to set them back to. 
and keep some kind of record of this. Now, granted, most approaches to this aren't going to be analog. It is going to involve Excel sheets, potentially some PowerShell, and a, a lot of like power from your administrators just spending time looking at screens. But it's better to have some kind of record so in an instant you know what you need to do. On the other hand, if you're looking for automation and software, there are options available. Tools like CoreView can do this for you by automating the backup and also enabling you to rewind your tenant to a previous configuration state if that's something that you and your team are looking to do to take the pressure off of yourselves a bit because everybody knows Microsoft 365 is already demanding enough and adding in the responsibility of manually backing up and auditing changes in your configuration, possibly every day or week, can get slightly overwhelming. My name is Rob from CoreView and until next time, have a good day.